<laughs> We're live. <laughs> so I think he's given me or he's given his people the uh, the intro. We're live on YouTube, and I'm so excited about that. Excited to join my brother. Here we go. Yeah, buddy. Hello, hello, everyone joining. Welcome, welcome. So here's Chris. So I'm going to give a little intro before welcoming Chris into the into the live. So this is um, going to be a, a food talk show. So I'm going to be here on this side of the world. Um, I'm actually in front of my family's home um, table. Like my uncles, my dad grew up around this table uh, eating every day and uh, this is the table that kind of held the history of my family michelle family the french family should join for in a long, uh, and 30 years ago my mom came from colombia to france and Text ate around and this table Make sure they know how to and i was born and i grew up with my grandmother around this table playing cards and eating so very special place uh to be having this conversation and i'm going to be inviting one of my dear friends um chris shembra we met a few years ago in, uh, actually in, in, uh, in, in Tel Aviv, we met um, uh, together with a group of community builders. And what brings us together is that they're both passionate about food and about community building. And uh, we think of food as a tool to connect people. We, that's how we see it. And this is how kind of really uh, we exercise both of our passions. Right now, Chris is in New York and I'm going to welcome him to the live uh, now he's going to be making a surprise for us so welcome everybody who's joining here i see there's a lot of people there's chris my man ciao, hey ciao ciao, ciao. <laughs> my brother my, my, how are you doing brother my brother and my love sharing pasta sauce from our kitchens uh yeah your, your kitchen has a, mu a much better view than mine does right i'm pretty i'm pretty good here it's uh it's good it's good but it's so nice that we're able to see each other you know like connecting bordeaux with new york in real time it's so exciting see there's a lot of people from latin america joining people saying hi already yes pasta sauce hello yes, amy pasta sauce i love Pamela, that danny fernandez gente do brazil Hola todos. Colombia. Belly from Turkey, Colombia, Ecuador. Cool, cool. Right, there's a lot of people here already connected. All right, Chris. So let's get it going. So before I give it to you, I'm just gonna set up my own side of the of the of the preparation and the live, which is a nice little bottle of Bordeaux. It's oh, 7 p.m. Man. here. So I'm going to be this would be the type of wine I would have when you come here after the lockdown. Uh, at some point, you'll come to France. We'll, we'll share something like this. And so I have a little bottle of wine and, and a nice and little will, tasting glass. Oh, and I will do, do, and I will do a, a, a bottle of champagne in order, in honor of talking with France. I'm going to do Good. Uh, a is nice Is it glass. French champagne, though? Is this it is, French champagne or is, is it kind of... French. It's a uh, Sherlin, uh, okay. direct from France. And our, oh, our, good. our friends of the family import it. Uh, oh, Lauren, beautiful. Joshua, Isaiah, and Lynn Thomas. Uh, Isaiah uh -huh. was a, a Hall of Fame, two-time NBA champion with the Detroit Pistons. And after oh, wow. basketball, he's dedicated his life to CBD oils and champagne. So this is his uh, champagne that he directly sent from Lauren. So All excited to be. That's exciting. I've been saving it for you, my friend. Oh, that's good. And to celebrate, so tell us, this is... You're launching your book today, right? You've been waiting for, for what, for a year, I guess, working I mean, on I, this book, Gratitude I, and Pasta. I've been I've been waiting my whole life to put out a book. Um, <laughs> being being an being an author runs in the family. I get it from my uh -huh. dad, and this book was birthed uh, between myself, uh, my girlfriend Molly, and our contributing author Sarah Stibitz about a year ago. And today was supposed to be our 
official launch. The book tour, all the media, all the people, all the events was supposed to start today. But instead, we chose yeah. to be here with you all. And I, I really couldn't be happier. I'm glad it worked out this way. Right. It's 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 uh, it's odd times, but, you know, um, got to keep safe, got to got to stay home yeah. and and do what we have to do to to be also living in a good harmony. So we're celebrating the launch mm. of your book and and you're going to be also we're also celebrating something very special because when I met you, I remember you said something about pasta sauce and you kept on explaining this pasta sauce story. And I kind of overheard it. And I was like, what is this guy talking about pasta sauce all the time? And then I realized that this pasta sauce is actually a secret that you've never shared with every, with anybody. You've shared the, the, the secret uh, kind of ingredients to, to the experience that you create, right? Around, um, around conversation and gratitude and, and this spaghetti plate, always the same menu but you've never shared the actual recipe to your pasta sauce. And this is this the is first a, time. This is a, a sacred, sacred part of my heart. Um, um, and I, I wouldn't share it with anybody but you and, and your audience. But, you know, the story, so nice. the, the story of the pasta sauce, which we're going to make in a little bit, the story of this sauce uh, starts in July of 2015. Uh, we had just mm -hmm. come back from Italy after producing a, a big Broadway play over there. By, by that point in 2015, I'd been in show business for about five years already. Everything mm -hmm. looked great on paper. We had all the awards, we had all the achievements. But when we got to Italy, we saw oh. the world through a completely different lens. The food, the art, the culture, the spirit, the language. I loved, you know, La Dolce Vita. And when I came back to New York City, I found myself alone without the food of Italy and thinking to myself, what, what kind of, what's missing in my life? I realized I felt four things in that moment, lonely, unfulfilled, disconnected, and insecure. And a lot mm. of the people watching this probably feel one of those four things, you know, on a daily basis. And in that darkness, I found myself, you know, fiddling with food in my kitchen, thinking back to what I love most about Italy. I started fiddling with this food and accidentally created a pasta sauce recipe mm -hmm. and figured I should probably feed it to people to see if it's even good or not. You know, it's one thing to think my own sauce is good, but what would others think? And so mm -hmm. we started using the sauce as a tool for connection. And here we are, you know, five years, uh, 400,000 relationships later, uh, and we get to talk about the sauce, but we've, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I love how, how deep, you know, sometimes recipes and, you know, things that become tradition, how do things become tradition in the first place, right? Because um, at some point, someone invented something, did for the first time, something that we now consider to be tradition. Uh, but um, I've always kept with me this, this, this saying by Nadia Santini, the chef, uh, three Michelin star chef, one of my greatest mentors and teachers ever. Uh, I work with her. She's a chef of the three Michelin star, right? So that's already an incredible achievement, but uh, she's also an incredible woman. And she used to say that um, tradition is everything that deserves the passing of generations. Mm. Right? If something deserves the passing of, you know, the, 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 the storytelling, being in the story, and the longer it gets, and if it deserves that passage, it becomes tradition. And so I wonder, you know, with your story, now that you have this tradition that runs in your life with your friends, the relationship that you build around the story of, of this pasta sauce that you're going to share with us today, which I find quite, quite amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, later on in this conversation, we're going to talk about how pasta sauce led to gratitude. Mm. Gratitude leads to values. Values creates legacy. But really, I'm standing here right now honoring the legacy of my grandfather. My, exactly. My namesake, mm. Cristoforo Scambra, who immigrated oh, Scambra, from Guadalupe. Sicily. <laughs> see, see, he, he immigrated through Ellis Island on August 2nd, 1916. And when he arrived mm. to America, he became a butcher. He raised his mm. family, my dad's family, in, in uh, Glen Ridge, New Jersey, and had a butcher shop in Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And as his career went on, he finally retired down to a small little island in South Carolina where I was raised. And he got so bored in retirement that he actually went back to work as a butcher part-time in the local butcher shop as like an 80-year-old. 
And he did, you know, did the butcher until he couldn't work anymore. And years later, as I was applying for my very first job in a restaurant, I was having an, an interview with the big executive chef, Mr. Lee, this native Hilton Head Islander. And I noticed in the interview that Mr. Lee had a photograph of my grandfather over his shoulder. He said, Mr. Lee, why is my grandpa in your office? He said, I apprenticed under him in the local butcher shop. Oh, and wow. I, learned, I learned more about life watching the way that man cut meat than I ever could before in my life. And I realized that was my grandfather's legacy. And God mm. willing, I was able to find some simple, silly little pasta sauce. And that's my legacy, food and connection. I'm so excited to be talking about those yeah. exact concepts with you today that's beautiful chris well let's let's cheer and then let's get to cooking right let's cheer for for connection for cheers. the for the virtual connection but also the connection hey, to hey our molly, stories can you come for a cheers hey molly hold on i'm getting my i'm getting my girlfriend oh, molly, molly. Coming for a cheers <laughs> you're good you're good honey you know what? come say hi to everybody. okay her her hair is not done so she's just doing it with the glass okay so chin chin i'll, I'll bring I'll bring my dad later also so he says hi but perfect chin -chin. cheers salute tu viendras tout à l'heure dire un petit bonjour Right. 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 All right. Mm. Um, so cheers. Cheers, buddy. Mm. 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 It's nice. All right. So um, tell us about this sauce that you're going to make. So, so about the, the ingredients that you have there, because we need to get going with the cooking. Otherwise, we, we do all the talking and then we're just <laughs> so we're going to start with a very simple recipe. We're talking about mm. olive oil, onions, garlic, tomatoes, basil, bay leaf, and the secret ingredient, carrot. Carrot. That's that's so, that's unexpected. So normally normally pasta sauce doesn't have I normally mean, red pasta sauce would So have carrot. what yeah. we're what we're starting off with is one whole yellow onion. Many of you know there is a difference between a red onion, a white onion, a yellow onion. We go with the yellow onions for this recipe. We only use the finest of olive oil. This won uh, the gold award last year in the international olive oil competition. We're going to not drown the onion in olive oil. We're just going to lightly coat it. Now we're going to add in eight uh, cloves of garlic and we're going to mince the heck out of them using a garlic press or a garlic oh. twister. Um, That's interesting technology. Yeah, like it's a, uh, like a flour grinder. Yeah, it just it just minces it up, knocks in the All boots. Right. We're gonna turn it on, you know, low to medium heat. Uh, you know, the the key with cooking onions and garlic, as you know, is to let it sweat, not let it burn. Mm, exactly. You know, sweat, as our dear friend Gennaro Quintaldo says, sweating is like uh, taking a jog, burning. Yeah. Is is like going under the, the Italian sun and sitting for an entire day with no sunscreen. <laughs> we don't exactly. want to do that. And it's funny because so that's what happens, keep... right? With the onions and, and in French, you also say suer, right? Uh, in Spanish, you also mm -hmm. say suar uh, as, a, as the technique, right? And I want to I say hi to all the, the there's, we're saying, we're having people from Mexico here connecting and Nicaragua and Salvador. Uh, there's also folks from from uh, from Tel Aviv apparently that are saying hi. Someone asked where we ate in Tel Aviv. We ate some really good meals in in we, in Israel. All right, that was at, really amazing. I mean, I think our our the best place we went was the hotel Bereshit, right on uh, Mitzvah yes. Ramon, the big yeah. crater. And what a yeah, yeah, what yeah. a wonderful you know it's crazy. The Negev you know, Desert. You know, it's Negev crazy Desert. going on that, so that trip with everybody and we get the nicest hotel in the Middle East, except we all sleep outside on the pool deck together <laughs> to watch the sun come up. That, was, that, that, that did happen. That um, was what happened. So while, so while you're letting the onions and the garlic sweat, uh, this is about the time when you can take out your carrots and start chopping them up. So we use carrots to offset the pH balance, the acidity of the tomatoes. So if you have a good San Marzano tomato, you're talking about a highly acidic product. Tomatoes are so acidic mm. that when yeah. eaten on a frequent basis, it can actually give you, you know, throat yeah. kind of uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, yeah. GERD, a lot of heartburn. So 
Yeah, and sometimes also when we use tomato, right, we tend to use sweet ingredients like onions bring sweetness, especially when they're cooked softly and, and, and you know, they sweat, like uh, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Uh, I also, I recommend when people have like tomatoes uh, to add a little bit of, of, of honey sometimes even in the sauce. Like that's a little mm. secret ingredient that, that kind of controls a little bit the acidity, but, but continue because you're talking about, about adding sugar, right? Well, sugar, sweetness through the carrot. Yeah, so we, we add the sweetness through the carrot to offset the pH balance of the tomato. Um, and mm. that's gonna be the second ingredient that goes in. We're not gonna add salt to our mm. cooking until we add the sweetness of the carrot. So the sweetness of the carrot mm. and the and the salt from you know a big thick mm. salt is going to go in at the same time, um, and and we find mm. that adding in the salt during the carrot al allows the carrot's flavors to come up because we all know you know salt fat acid heat for very simple ingredients that when added at different times in the cooking process have different effects mm. on taste and flavor. That's good. Well, you got your you got your science of cooking there, right? <laughs> well, yeah, very, very cause, good. Because I'm a student of yours. That's it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> long, long. You know, I, student of life. I, I think you and I had some good tomato conversations when we were on that tomato farm in Israel. And yeah. that was when we really sat next to each other and said, Hey, you love food. I love food. And we were on the farm yeah. of actually the largest exporter of Israeli tomatoes in the country. A great place to check out. Where are we? Tour. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That was amazing. It's also organic as well. Oh, yeah. It's really interesting okay. thing happening over there. So we've had some, yeah. we've had some sweat with our mm -hmm. uh, onion and garlic. Now we're going to put in one cup of carrot. And we've really, we've really kind of, you know, chopped it up to a small piece Okay, but it doesn't have fine. to get completely evaporated. We're going for kind of a chunky sauce. I like chunky mm. peanut butter the same way I like a chunky tomato sauce. So at the same also time, it conveys it conveys a sense of of of, of home, uh -huh. right? When it's thicker, like often cooks tend to think that when you we do like perfectly cut and you know, especially the fine dining kind of uh, perspective, no. we tend to think that the more perfect everything, the better. It's not true. It depends. Sometime cutting rough, cutting kind of these more traditional ways and more simple ways, like the way your grandma would cook it, would cut it, right? Which is like irregular and in big chunks, small chunks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gives for a more rich sensory experience in the mouth, which is, I guess, what, what you're, what you're so, doing there, right? To be authentic. So for instance, we're using a, uh, a, a very thick salt directly from the sea salt. in Sicily. Mm. You know, it, oh. I, I, Italian salt, that's Italian good. Italian salt, of mm -hmm. course. E everything that we cook from in New York City comes directly from Italy. So directly from mm. uh, Ital Italy, you know, we shop at Italy mm. um, right yeah. here in in, uh, in the Flatiron. And it's really the it's it's really the best shopping experience. Here we are in the middle of the, you know, the quarantine in the middle of crisis. I mean, what a, what a time to be having this kind of conversation about food and connection. Uh, but here in the middle of New York City, uh, you know, we, we hear ambulances going by every single day and yeah. the shopping is the scariest part because that's when you really come in contact with people. But Italy has curbside pickup so we can just mm. order the food and they bring it out to you so we don't have to see people. That's good. Um, yeah, that's lucky. Okay. Yeah, lucky. And, you know, we, t we think a lot about people in the front lines um, of, um, of the, 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 the kind of health uh, front lines, but also all the folks that are making food right now that are keeping it going, you know, mm -hmm. it's so admirable. And all the people in the food industry as well, restaurants in particular, who are really struggling with new conditions. And now, but you know, even the, the people at the, you know, in the farms and the supply chains and supermarkets taking risks, it's so important that we're grateful even more so now for the food that we're able to have and for the security, the food security that we're able to have all over the world with people keep on, you know, working in, in food so anyways um, i just wanted to give do a little kind of thought for for how definitely beautiful a, it is all the people who keep on feeding us definitely a big thought for them um i'm going to interrupt you for just a sec we're on to the tomato part Go ahead. so my hand is literally in the pot so we've we've <laughs> got imported san marzano tomatoes there's so many different kinds of tomatoes plum tomatoes cherry tomatoes heirloom tomatoes this is a san marzano tomato grown in the south of italy it comes out like this elongated 
object. Now, I mm -hmm. literally will pour my entire thing of tomatoes, 106 ounces of tomatoes, and my hand is in the pot. Nice. So oh, nice. My hand. I like that sense of reality. Oh, yeah. It's um, That's good. It feels good, too, no? Oh, like it's warm. It's, it all it's, feels it's like great. Juicy. It's like uh, <laughs> it saves me money on having to go to the spa. <laughs> it's true true um, true but some of the food can be like that yeah but now now something to keep in mind is that as i'm squishing the tomatoes i'm yeah. not i'm not purifying the tomatoes i'm not taking my tomatoes and put it putting them through a food processor i'm just lightly mm. crushing them again we want that kind of thick you know, uh, we want that kind of thick reminder that this is homemade in a kitchen with someone's actual yeah. bare hands. So we're not yeah, taking yeah. a knife to the tomato, right? I, mm -hmm. I never take a knife to tomato. I never take a knife to mozzarella. I just use my hands for that. It's true. Uh -huh. It's true. You know, for, for and that's, that's food connection uh -huh. there. You know, it's, you know, we're talking about food is connection also in terms of relationships and we'll get there in a, in a, in a few minutes but also the connection of, of the process, right? And the connection of the cook with the food in a way that, that is so mm -hmm. intrinsic to human, mm -hmm. right? I was talking about being human. Uh, someone just commented from, from Saudi Arabia and there was someone also from, from Turkey and someone from Saudi Arabia said um, uh, that, uh, you know, food is connection there as well. And, and, you know, it might be the most universal thing of all, you know, putting the hand in the food, whether it is a bread dough, where, whether it is uh, a sauce as you're doing, it's kind of eccentric a little bit to put the hand in the pot, but I, I love it, <laughs> right? And that's, that's kind of the, the authenticity, right? We're talking about values, the, the authenticity that we sometimes lack when it comes to, to, to feeding ourselves and to feeding others. Um, we take ourselves a bit too seriously. And, and, and so this authentic sauce that you're making leads for authentic human connection. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Yeah, right. we'll get there. In, in the meantime, three ingredients that I have to put, put in as we're speaking. One is I just put in a, a, a good dose of pepper. We like our sauce spicy. Sometimes uh, people eat the sauce and they say, uh, what, what's the spice come from? Did you put in red pepper? Did you, no, black pepper. And so it's very important, yeah. pepper, whether you know it or not, pepper loses its flavor the longer after the longer you, you grind it. it. And you so, grind it, yeah. And so we go directly from you know fresh ground pepper right into the pot. Mm -hmm. We go to fresh live bay leaf, uh, basil right in the pot. One thing to notice is that when you get a, a big thing of basil or you, or you pick it out in your garden is that when you're removing the basil, you don't, mm -hmm. you want to pinch it so that the stem doesn't get involved. The stem is kind of a very sour thing. And that'll, that'll offset okay. the, uh, at least for my sauce, I don't put the stems okay. in my for sauce. sauce. Um, okay. I, I will have a different, I will have a diverging opinion, but here we're talking about connection. So I'm going to let you do your sauce and, and not use the stem, but that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that's just my sauce. And That's then, your sauce. Uh, and then, you know, uh, four or five bay leaves. So by the way, this sauce okay. that we're cooking, you may sit there and say, how are you going to eat that much sauce? Well, the truth is, this is the smallest batch of sauce I've ever made. Uh, I, I, am, <laughs> I do not know how to cook for two people. I live my life mm. cooking for 18 to 400 people. And so this mm. recipe that we've talked about with the 106 ounces of tomato, one onion, one cup of carrot, eight garlic cloves, etc. This will feed 14 to 16 people very easily. So we're going to talk later about how to use food as a tool for connection. It does not have to cost a lot of money. All these ingredients were what, 10, 12 bucks? And, and so that's about a, yeah. a dollar per person for dinner. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so we've raised the heat. We're going to let it come to a boil. Once it hits a boil, I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer. Um, and then we're just going to kind of let it hang out for a little bit. I'll keep testing. You know, I will definitely keep stirring, but I'll keep testing the flavor as we go along. And then mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a nice bowl of pasta in a little bit. 
Beautiful. So what do you do with that pasta sauce? What have you been doing? How did you engineer 400,000 connections with the same recipe of pasta sauce? And what's, and what's kind of, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know where to start. You know, there's, there's the why yeah. you got there. You told us a bit about that. It's how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's why you do it. It's um, what has, you know, how the, has that changed your life? I mean, you wrote a book about it, mm -hmm. right? So um, how do you go from this pasta recipe to gratitude and to changing people's lives? Yeah, so it, it all started, as I mentioned, on that July 15th was our very first dinner. And on that very first dinner, we had 15 friends come into our home. We had the pasta sauce was cooking on the stove. We had the wine, the cheese, the appetizers out on the other tables. And I knew I wanted dinner served at 8 p.m. that night. And a little bit before dinner was to be served, I said, huh, I could probably use some help in the kitchen. So at 7.47 p.m., wherever the sauce went, at 7.47 p.m., we actually put the pasta in the pot and delegated 11 specific tasks, empowering the attendees to work together to create the meal. Beautiful. And we sat down for dinner. We had some great pasta sauce. And at the very first dinner, we asked a very simple question. Mm -hmm. If you could give credit or thanks to one person in your life that you don't give enough credit or thanks to, who would that be? Someone you've never thought of thinking, mm -hmm. someone you've never thought of in your life, someone you've never met, someone you've known your entire life, what have you. And much to our delight and surprise, because of the pasta sauce, because of the delegated task and all the wine and that question, people opened up. And they shared yeah. some amazing stories. And mm. what we realized is that we had stumbled into a very specific set of principles. Yeah. Get, get people to cook together, yeah. cook some very simple food, and then ask a question about gratitude. We asked yeah. that question to get people to tell stories. You'll notice that it's pretty hard if you meet someone new, it's pretty hard if that person says, hey, Charles, what's your biggest fear? Hmm. What's your biggest failure? What's your yeah. greatest regret? It's intimidating, right, as a question? That's, that's an intimidating question. Hmm. And so we noticed over time that this gratitude question was very easy for people to tell stories of the people who weren't at the dinner. And for things that go very deep in one's psyche i would say right in mm -hmm. in a way that you you always go to you know someone who changed your life or you know mother or father or or someone really close in a way that shaped your journey uh, right i wonder you know we could ask this question if i mean i see there's there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of folks connected right now um would you like to share with us you know who if you had to thank one person, then you hadn't, I mean, you had, you asked the question better, uh, Chris, what's the question? So, so to all our people watching, my question to you is, if you could give credit or thanks to one mm. person in your life that you don't ever think of, mm. who would that be? Write your answer in the comments below and you could write, Mother, father, friend, stranger, it is. dog, and teacher, like whoever. Thing, yeah. mm. So write, write them in the question. You want to give credit and thanks to India? Nice. Oh, <laughs> India? that's where she's well, from. Oh, maybe that's where maybe, she's from. Maybe, but hello to everyone on in, in India who's watching. That's amazing. <laughs> dog. Interesting. Giannina, dog. First class teacher. My mom. My mom. First class teacher. Grandmother. Teaches to cook. Grandmother, yeah. Mom, brother, Charles. Oh, he gave credit and thanks to you, the professor. <laughs> now, now I, I have a, I have been a follow up question. Hmm. So, the people that you're giving credit and thanks to now, I want mm -hmm. you to think about for a sec. What have you learned from them? What have they learned from you? 
Why do they keep showing up in your life? Why mm. have you let distance come between them? Why I ask that is, I want you to think about how you can tell their stories to now the people in your life. I want you to think about if you're talking about your grandmother taught you to cook. My question is, who are you now teaching to cook? And how many stories of your grandmother have you shared with them? Yeah. Because odds cool. are, odds are there's a lot of people in our past that helped us to get to where we are today that we just never think about. And we have an opportunity to now create connection admitting that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. And I was just thinking um, that not only not only the person, you know, that I, I, I would eventually share, and there's a few, um, but also everyone here kind of um, sharing or thinking about how they would be, they could be better and they could kind of, um, I guess, elevate the memory of the people who have been important for them. And um, yeah, and also kind of you know, remembering. I, I think we forget, and especially in these times where everything is so fast paced, right? We want to achieve things, get to a, a, the next goal, the next success metric, whatever it is. And we tend to forget to stop, first of all, to reflect, which is what we're doing, everyone at home. And a lot of us are reflecting and having time to, 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 to have time, <laughs> um, but also to, to remember. And, and sometimes if we, rem if we forget to remember, we don't know where we're going. And maybe that's what's happening to humankind, I feel, uh, on, a, on a large scale, that we forgot where we come from, where we forget our ancestors, we forget our close ancestors and our far ancestors, where we come from truly. And hence, we have no freaking idea of where to take this boat of the human, you know, human race and planet um, forward because we've forgotten our roots and we've been kind of uprooted in a way living in cities living this fast-paced thing with these devices around us like these virtual connections that now we're so grateful for of course but that are playing an important role but that sometimes disconnect us from the things that truly matter like the connections the authentic connect authentic connections as you say uh with the closest people and the people that have made us who we are so yeah, thank you for that reflection. That's really beautiful. Char Charles, I must ask you, hmm. if you, Charles, could give credit or thanks to one person oh, uh, in your life, you who would that yeah. be? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a few people um, that I can think of that I feel so grateful and surrounded with, but I think I never give enough thanks to my mother. Um, my mother, my mother had to go through very hard things to, for me to be the, you know, balanced human that I am today. Like in a way I consider myself really kind of um, very lucky, very fortunate um, and in a very good place now as a human and always, and it's always been thanks to, to, to my mother and how, um, how generous she is, her generosity and and I guess how, um, yeah, how I think the word in English, I'm, I'm trying to find the word in English. Um, I think it's selfless, which is just, mm -hmm. you know, putting others, the people that she loves, putting them first and then worrying about her and which is kind of has a dark side as well. But, but just in general, she's just been, you know, she's my rock and she's kind of my root. And I'm getting sentimental thinking about it and just sharing it with you here on live. And, and I really appreciate for the question, but, um, but yeah. And if I'm not sure if she's watching because she doesn't speak English, but, uh, but I love her so, so much. She's in Bogota right now uh, by herself at home. Uh, and I, and I think about her um, every day, of course. If, and, if, um, if, if, if she was watching this, mm -hmm. what would you say right now? Um, dude, <laughs> um, si yo soy alguien en esta vida es gracias a ti. That's what I would say. If I'm someone in life and if you become someone in life that, you know, doing any kind of good, it's thanks to her. 
if you're watching this from around the world, please raise your glass to what uh, <laughs> Komatikiyama, or uh, what is her name? So she's, she's called Luz, which Luz. means light. Luz. Cheers to Luz. <laughs> Cheers to Luz. <laughs> thank you, brother. That's very nice. Now, <laughs> thank you all. Now, thank you, Charles, mm. for, for, for doing that. And what it sounds like you, you honor and respect the most in your mother, her generosity, her selflessness. Mm. I, I, would, I would hope that she can see your generosity and selflessness in serving your community and she must be so proud. <laughs> and my hope as we go forward with your community and your, your Patreon supporters and your YouTube channel and your Instagram massive following. My hope is that you tell more stories of your mother because that's legacy. We are all here, the 130,000 of us on your Instagram today are here because of her, but you have to tell her story. You owe her that for her legacy. And I'm so excited to learn so much more about it today. It's going to be beautiful, my friend. So beautiful. Oh, so nice, Grace. I appreciate you so much, so deeply. And, and I can't believe that we're having this conversation now. And you know, it's, it's so special and so grateful to be having this, you know, with, with everyone who's watching and, and everyone who will watch. Um, but yeah, I take note. Like, I, I really do. Um, I really take note of talking more often about my mom um, on, on, on social media. I talk a lot about um, my dad, about my sister, about my life, about my friends, but it's true that I, um, I, I don't um, maybe honor as much as she would deserve. So um, thank you for that. That's really special to remember. <laughs> thank you for that, my man. You're good. You're good. <laughs> 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 Who's, who, right. Everybody, everybody's saying they're crying. Look, Aww. many, many, many people. That's so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I'm so. I think we're so blessed to be living in this time of in human history where we get to have this incredible technology that allows us to not only curate um, narratives and stories because we can choose who we follow. Um, but also allowing us to have this immediacy, right? We almost feel like we could be in the room next to each other and we're actually, we're actually in that direction, actually in that direction somewhere, you know, like a thousand <laughs> kilometers away. You know, we're here sharing an intimate moment. You know, it's, it's really interesting. When I was, uh, I was talking with my friend Cal Fussman the other day and he, uh, Cal, Cal Fussman had one goal in life. When he was a kid, he wanted to interview Muhammad Ali for a newspaper, right? At that time, mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali was the Cristiano Ronaldo, the Lionel Messi of sport. And he accomplished his dream at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 18, he said, well, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I've already accomplished everything I want to accomplish. So he mm -hmm. took a little bit of money and he sailed off to Europe. And he floated around Europe on the kindness of strangers for 10 years. They passed mm. him around from town to town, family to family. He eventually came back to America and he started an interview series with Esquire magazine. Big, big, big magazine. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, there was the Great Recession, the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, the magazine said, Cal, we've run out of money. You can't go flying everywhere to interview the presidents and kings and queens. You have to do it virtually. And Cal said, how am I going to do it virtually? I got to I got to be there in person. Hmm. But he tried it. He tried doing what we're doing now. And gosh, golly, it worked so well. I mean, if you think about it, here we are. We're we're five feet away. We're we're ten inches away from each other. <laughs> yeah. All all the people, all the people that are watching here, if they were watching us on a big stage, we'd be two hundred feet apart. We'd be a hundred meters apart. 
but, but now in their hands. But now we're in we're in. So I I I love this. And you know what you were talking about earlier is is history, and mm. we have to study what came before us in order to see where we're going. I always say that that innovation is just history repeating itself, looking different. In mm. order to innovate. <clears throat> We must study the past. And the good news is our world has survived crisis like this many, many times over. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. What, what happened after the bu bubonic plague in the Dark Ages? You had the Renaissance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to hurt. This is going to hurt. But we're going to come together because of it. And the whole world is going to prosper for many, oh, many yeah. years after this, I think. And hopefully a regenerative renaissance is coming up. And I think it's uh -huh. definitely been cooking for a few years, if not decades. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Carolyn. Oh, God, it's so good. It's so good. Cheers. I'm going to pour myself a second one. I'm gonna, I'm Cheer, gonna cheers to the entire... Moderation. Yeah. Cheers good to the moderation, Detroit but... Pistons and Isaiah like. Thomas. Oh, my God, this is so good. Mm. Yeah. Next time we wow. should do this, but drinking the same thing. Ah. Drink the same thing, right? There's a different level of connection. That'd be good. That'd be good. Um, well, our our um, our sauce is uh, is is getting pretty good, and so yeah. uh, I'm gonna start cooking some pasta in yeah. a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> so one one thing that I'm gonna talk about with pasta is that we always like to make it homemade, home fresh. Mm -hmm. And in, nice. in, in, in times like today, all you really need is a little bit of flour and some water. Yeah. Uh, you know, th this yeah. is uh, semolina. Yeah. This is semolina flour from the south of Italy. Yeah. Um, and so that, that flour is made. Granaturo, right? Si. South of Italy. Yeah. Uh, See, si, but, um, and then we have double zero, uh, zero zero flour, uh, okay. which is flour that you'll find in the north okay. of Italy. So the, okay. the south, the south of Italy yeah. makes uh, essentially semolina and water based mm -hmm. flour. So you're talking yeah. about spaghetti, yeah, yeah. malaredus, cavatelli. Yeah. These are these are uh, southern pastas. The north yeah. of Italy. They use egg and they use more refined flour. Exactly. So the, exactly. So the North creates pastas like pappardelle, tagliatelle, linguini, ravioli, tortellini. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. all of that is, is the really refined Absolutely. part. But, but I'm, so from, yeah, I'm no, from Sicily and, and Salerno. So yeah. we do no eggs. Exactly. So in the North, just to recap, in the North of Italy, we have a pasta, which is made with a particular type of flour, which is called grano tenero, right? Um, it's a bit more um, lower in, um, in, in protein content, lower in gluten, and it has uh, often eggs, right? It's mm -hmm. yellow. The fresh pasta from the south is made uh, with um, grano duro, semolina, and mm -hmm. often just water, sometimes a bit of oil in the dough. Yeah. There's many yeah. types of doughs, of course. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then it's also kind of the tradition of the pasta asciutta, which means dry pasta because there's a lot of wind, right, in the in the south. And so you you traditionally you would dry the pasta and preserve it, which is where you know um, spaghetti and bucatini and all this comes from as well, which with a different type of flour, but also from the south, no egg. So you know the uh, on the on the yeah. history of Italian. So so like yesterday was the International Day for Carbonara. Mm. And oh, really? so, so cabanada is a traditionally Roman dish. Roma. I mean, this, the, the simplest food from Rome is a sheep farmer walking around with uh, some pasta and some sheep's milk pecorino Romano See? cheese or cacio is a, a different cacio. type of Roman cheese and yep. a little bit of pepe. And... Mm -hmm. When you put those three ingredients together, you get cacio e pepe. Mm -hmm. When you add a little bit onto that, you have pasta alla criccia. When you add a little bit to that, you have cabanara. When you add yeah. a little bit to that, you have a matarachiana. 
a matriciano, which comes, sì. which comes from the town of Matricia, right outside of Rome. But uh, yesterday was Matricia, sì, sì. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, Love it. And so yesterday was uh, the International Day of Cabanara. Mm -hmm. so. Beautiful. I didn't know that. But uh, I'm glad you're, you know, as a, uh, yeah, there's so much um, Italian kind of, you know, legacy in New York, in Toronto, uh, in, in, in the States in general, but in particular, the community there is very strong. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're really connected with those roots. Oh, Amazing. yeah. Well, we, yeah. Um, we went over, we went over to Italy, my dad and I, in February. Mm -hmm. So you see how quick that was? Yeah, the pasta. I'm talking all the long, like you've cooked like for five minutes. Yeah, but when you <laughs> when you buy dried pasta in a box yeah. in the store, mm -hmm. you know you usually have to cook it, you know, eight to ten, you know, twelve minutes to make it al dente. Yeah. But when you're when you're yeah. making homemade pasta right here, you only have to cook it for a couple minutes. Yeah, because it hasn't had time to dehydrate, right? So. Uh -huh. Part of the idea of cooking pasta is that you're hydrating it, you're putting water into it, you're softening it, but if it's fresh, it's already soft, so you just need to really cook um, the, um, the, 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 the protein, the gluten in it, um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the carbohydrates. So, um, kind of, yeah. right, right now, <laughs> we're trying to make the pasta soft, yet hard Chewy, to the tooth. Bit, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the and when you make pasta al dente, not only is it good for aesthetics and, and flavor, but it's also good for digestion. And Charles for will digestion. say a little bit more for that. <laughs> right. So if, if pasta is um, um is super cooked, you will tend to chew it less, right? Because um, you know, it will just kind of kind of melt in your mouth and you you will kind of swallow larger pieces of um of um of, of pasta, if it's al dente, you need to chew it in order to be, kind of enjoy swallowing it, which means that you're helping your gut break down all the nutrients um, to have to make it easy for the gut to absorb the nutrients in your food. It's so important that we uh, that we actually chew our food. We need to chew a lot. And if you have digestive problems, if you have pooping problems, think about starting with from the beginning, which is how well are you chewing and how fast are you eating? And so eating pasta al dente uh, makes it kind of that we are forced to chew more and we take more time. And it's of course much more pleasurable. It holds better the sauce, much more um, um, uh, enjoyable part, but also it will help um, just, do, it will help your gut absorb the nutrients uh, from the pasta much, much better. Um, so, so really an important point. It's not just kind of, you know, al dente is, has a reason to be. So by the way, just, just for notice, what I did was I took the pasta out a little bit early before al dente mm. and I transferred it into a new pot. Usually yeah. if you had a lot of pasta, you just put it back in the normal pot, but I transferred yeah. it into the saucepan and I added some of our piping hot sauce into here which makes the pasta cook for just just a minute or two longer while I get my bowl ready. But, exactly. But what's important is that you don't take the pasta directly into the bowl and then just put sauce on top. That's yeah. uh, that's that's no good. You have to actually, you know, mix the pasta in with the sauce. And by the way, we got to talk about two different types of ways of making pasta. There's either using a machine or making pasta by hand. Making mm -hmm. pasta by hand will not squash the gas bubbles out and you'll get a much better texture of pasta, but that's not for today. That's for another, that's for another video. And there's two Absolutely. types of ways of cutting mm -hmm. pasta. You can either cut pasta with like a commercial uh, machine that you just throw the dough through and out pops rigatoni or spaghetti or something, or what a lot of artisanal pasta makers use is a bronze dye. So you might see on a pasta box, bronze cut pasta. That yeah. means it's been extruded through a bronze dye and it creates texture on the noodle uh -huh, mm. so that it holds onto the sauce a lot more. I so, love it. You, you, 
you you're a pasta you're a pasta master that's, i'm a pasta that's, guy you're a pasta guy the pasta guy um Absolutely. that's so, very important if you get to, in italian you say you call it trafila di bronzo um, see? which is this kind of see? the place where where the pasta goes out of the machine and uh, the surface just gets a little bit more rigged and it's less kind of um kind of shiny and that really holds pasta better show so, us the bowl we're ready yes, to go so we're we're ready to go we've we've got the pasta but the most important thing that i say at every dinner yeah. every single dinner when we're holding hands we got the pasta in front of us we're standing around the dinner table and we look down at the food and the last thing i say is you're going to notice that there's no salt or cheese on this table if you don't like my food <laughs> i don't care but you are going to love my food but i don't let people put extra salt or cheese on <laughs> on my pasta you must eat my sauce the way i make it that's good and, uh, like and, and obviously if you want to know this recipe charles will uh, organize that for us to to give out the recipe But Absolutely. I'm going to organize everyone, everyone here to follow Chris and to follow mm. 747 Club. Mm. Um, he's going to be posting his pasta sauce and of course I'll be reposting it. But that looks oh. good. Huh? And I'm oh. having this red wine here and nothing to eat in front of me. Yeah. And I'm okay. having red wine and champagne. <laughs> <laughs> pasta and champagne. Pasta oh. champagne. It's good. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh my God. Oh, ma vai, oh. muove le mani, muove le mani, dai. Molto buono. <laughs> this has been so fun, my friend. This has been yes, so it fun. Yes, it is. I don't, I don't even want this to end. I mean, how can we end this? I, I feel you still have so much to, to, to tell us about, about your journey and all, but I, I don't know. You want probably to just have your, your dish of pasta now. And, no, uh, I'm, I'm, your day. I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. I'm I'm here. We um we're okay. gonna go. We're, we're gonna, gonna wrap. We're, yeah, we're gonna wrap in a few minutes. Um, I do want to, if you if you had, you know, so to, just to 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 recap and for those who maybe are joining only now, um, Chris has been doing uh, dinners where he gets attendees very small dinners, always with the same pasta sauce. Uh, and the same and the same meal but he gets people to really deeply truly connect around the table with a ritual that he's been kind of designing for years um, that starts before you know well before eating at the dinner table with people meeting with people asking you know questions that get to people's hearts um, and and uh, and so I want to ask you two questions to close one of them is what has the those those dinners what have they brought to your life and to people's lives in terms of uh, connection and the second question will be what would you like to, people that are watching to take away into their daily mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. um, that they can make for more deeper connections um, with uh, with the people they love and the people who they just meet eventually um, in real world, but also in virtual world. So these dinners, to answer your first question, these dinners saved my life. Food has the power to heal broken mm. relationships. Food is the tool to creating empathy, great empathy for our world. For those of you who don't know what that word is, empathy, as defined by Roman Krisnarik, is the art of imaginatively stepping into the shoes of another person, understanding their feelings, perspectives, traditions, and using that knowledge to guide your action, right? Empathy is not sympathy. Mm. Empathy does not come from looking within. Empathy comes from looking around. And when you study food and you study the culture of others, You understand their history. You understand their way of being. And that helps create connection. Empathy has the power, has the power, sorry, champagne burps. Empathy <laughs> has the power to inspire entire movements into action. And that's what our world needs right now is action. Yeah. 
And so food to me saved my life. I realized that on a early Monday morning in February of 2016, I woke up in my bed, bawling my eyes out, realizing for the first time in my life, I was starting to feel a little bit of joy. See, I'm the guy that has the suicide, depression, rehab, all on the resume. Mm. I, I, I have so much trauma that I don't remember many, many parts of my life. And the trauma came from always feeling like I was left out. I was always the last one called to the party. Mm-hmm. See, my, my greatest thing is that you can know a lot of people, but still be the one forgotten about. Mm. And that was me. And when I realized that I didn't have to run any longer, I didn't have to lean to impress others. I could create the food. I could create the safe space for people to gather to come to me. That saved my life. That's why I do my dinners. Because if I don't do these dinners, I die. I die alone. Well, I, I've got my girlfriend and, and love. <laughs> but I, I, I die alone without community. And that's what food does. And when I saw the impact this food could have on other lonely people of this world, that's what allowed us to keep going. I don't do this for myself anymore. I do it because I have a responsibility to serve the people. Yeah. And so for all the people who are watching this, Mm. where you feel like your invitation is always somehow lost in the mail, my friends, you are not alone. And when you Mm. understand that pain, you can turn it around and use it as power, right? What used to be our greatest insecurity is now our greatest sense of joy and connection. See, it's not when people are riding high and achieving great things that you create connection. No, you look at who's down with you in the trenches through fear, regret, shame, and who those people are down there, that's connection, right? Kurt Vonnegut, a great science fiction writer in the 1960s and 70s, made all these different emotional models of how to make people fall in love with the protagonist in movies. Hmm. You could bring the protagonist on all these different journeys. But what he found is that if you knock down the protagonist in the beginning of the narrative, and then you build them up towards the end, they become the hero. So this Hmm. vulnerability that you're feeling, this sense of isolation and disconnection, that's the best part about you. That's hmm. beauty. You know, Kurt Cobain, the great singer from Nirvana, he said something along the lines of, you know, everybody laughed at me because I was different. But my friends, he laughed at them because they were all the same. Your uniqueness hmm. and your vulnerabilities are the greatest thing about you. And that's what people want to connect with, especially in times like today. You know, the the, the amount of, filters and, and and falsities that are going around that bullshit the world's catching up to that food allows you to connect because it brings you back to the basics and yeah. so that's my message for the world for the people that are watching tonight is don't go around having surface level conversations when you meet someone new don't just go up and ask them what do you do right get yeah. deeper right if you yeah. If you can send around a link, there's a TED Talk by a guy by the name of Simon Sinek. Simon Mm. Sinek gave the third most watched TED Talk of all time. And he draws a simple drawing for his TED Talk. It's three rings, one on the inside, one on the uh, medium, and then one on the outside. And Simon argues that people, most people, when they connect, only talk about the what. What do you do? What products do you sell? Mm -hmm. He says that some people can get to the how, that middle ring. And they talk about how they're different, what their unique value proposition is, how they're better than the other person, et cetera.
but very few can tell you why. That's that inner circle that we all want to get to. The why, that's not money. Those aren't profits. Yeah, those are the results. But the why is the thing that inspires us around us to connect. And that's what I challenge you all to go find is your why. Those aren't my words. That's the most, that's the third most watched TED talk of all time. Those aren't my words. But the why is what helps people gather. Take Martin Luther King, for instance. Martin Luther King got- 15 seconds left, I think. Oh, okay. Oh no, like this is over. I think it's the limit of an hour. Okay, good. Well then just go, go, go watch it. Find your why. Next episode. Next Next episode. Thank you, brother. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Love you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because you can only do it for an hour. All right. Why? Oh, they, All right, they Chris, wanted that. Still there on the. Yeah. Hey, you still no, there? No, on no, no. It, it literally just said. That's crazy. Got a little preachy. Oh, it's hey. you gave me champagne. <laughs> hey, Chris, can you hear me? Dude, the people in the con. Were you watching? Oh, no. You, oh. Um, oh, which I think it's still. Is it still on Zoom? Oh. We're still on Zoom. Hey, are you there on Zoom? I'm switching to video. Are you there on Zoom? Can I eat that tonight? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't hey. on Zoom. I wasn't listening to you. Um, Oops! I'm gonna come back. say goodbye on YouTube live. <laughs> Bye YouTube. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right.